This is kind of a explanation, tutorial, I don't know, weird time lapse thing, voiceover, I don't know. So, got my camera stand, my fabric, my mannequin, which is all wrapped up that I'm about to draw on, and reference pictures. <laughs> I should have recorded me wrapping it, but like... <laughs> oh my gosh, so I never recorded myself wrapping my mannequin in plastic wrap, but it's a lot easier when you're making patterns. So I was making my own pattern for this cosplay, so I just decided to get a bunch of plastic wrap and wrap it around my mannequin after I input like all my measurements. Ooh, input. That's a weird word to say for that. And um... If you're going to do this, I highly recommend just using a bunch of duct tape. I just used plastic wrap and just kept wrapping it and then used a bunch of clear tape. Just just use some duct tape. Get some duct tape for this. I'm putting in the middle lines now through the front, back, sides, just to get like the mannequin. It'll, it's easier to draw the pattern that way. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing the white line on the um, side of his costume that goes you know down you know you know what what it is that thing um and what I did was from the center line that I drew from the side I did an inch back and an inch forward <laughs> overall it would be four inches well after that I realized that he kind of has more coming from the front than the back so I did an extra half an inch so it's an inch back and an inch and a half going forward from that line because he just he just has like like a smidge just, just a smidge more white appearing in the front than it does in the back so inch back inch and a half forward now I'm kind of doing a dotted line on the top and the bottom so right on the bottom of my hip and right underneath the breast that way I can kind of map out where I want that weird square thing the whole time I'm staring at the pictures and trying to like judge where the best thing to do is. I'm pretty sure I did um, three inches from the center line. Uh, yeah, so like six inches of space in total. Then I drew an inch long line. So yeah, from the center line, three inches, three inches, and then I did an inch space down. What I'm doing now is I kind of took a plastic baggie and I went kind of up around the boob <laughs> and kind of drew a curved line and then did a dotted line underneath it to give it kind of that slant look because it isn't, you know, a perfect square. It's kind of, what's that shape? I don't know what the shape is. Either way, that is also an inch thick. And um, the way I did it was, underneath the boob at the dotted line, I drew kind of an inch up, and then I matched the two lines from the top of my um, three inches in, and then kind of just drew a line to an inch up. Then I made sure that the space between it remained an inch throughout the whole thing, did a dotted line and then a solid line. I did not do the same thing at the bottom. I didn't go an inch down. I still went one inch up because I didn't want it to go too far down. The whole time I'm like talking, saying what I'm doing. Why aren't I listening to what I'm doing? I'm probably explaining what I'm doing. Then I'm putting a uh, clear plastic tape over all of the edges because I know I'm going to be cutting them later and I want them to stay solid. This is taking forever. I'm just taping something. I'm gonna have to speed this up a lot more. It's going so slowly. I'm just ta I'm taping over the edges because I'm, I'm gonna cut them. Also, uh, I didn't draw armholes on this. I drew armholes later, which was kind of a stupid thing. So if you're gonna do this, draw your armholes in first and measure them out and don't do them later like I did, like an idiot. So I went around the edge and I kind of cut the bottom around just the extra plastic wrap that was around there. I'm cutting the pattern pieces, or the plastic wrap pieces, off of the mannequin now. This is why I recommend using duct tape 
for most of it instead of just plastic wrap because as soon as I cut the plastic wrap um, all of them just kind of like split apart and started to fall <laughs> so I started to take some tape and kind of like fold it over that way the plastic wrap stayed together just just do one layer of plastic wrap and then duct tape this is so slow see now that I'm watching this see I thought I didn't speed it up or sorry, I, I thought I sped it up too much. And now that I'm watching it, I'm like, this is so not enough. Nobody's gonna sit through this and watch me slowly cut plastic wrap off of a mannequin. So after I did that, I um, cut the outside line on the white part that I was going to use. That way the blue part and the white section would be their own pieces. So after I clearly, Oh, I broke it. I broke Adobe Premiere Pro. Come on, click play. This isn't that hard. So, cut off the pattern pieces, laying out the fabric. My cat's there. I love him. Be prepared to totally jack up your pins because I pinned it through tape and when I took the pins out, they got all sticky and messed up. Now, the reason I did this whole plastic wrap thing is because I wanted the cosplay to be kind of form-fitting just for the jacket part and then I made the skirt all like cute and puffy but I wanted it to fit nicely so with this part because of the curves just try to like push it down as best as you can and kind of flatten it out I guess not all the way not all the way because there were some mo moments like the boob part is very clear that I'm having a little bit of a struggle and I'm trying to match it up and I'm like how the hell but yeah, I was having a little trouble matching it up and making sure that like the two edges for the white parts came up, but everything seemed okay. So I just put a ruler there and kind of drew around the edge for the pattern. Uh, my fabric is folded in half because I'm doing an inner lining of the same color. So the inside basically came out the same looking as the outside. Just, you know, a couple of little differences, obviously. And I cut uh, part of the bottom off I didn't want, you know, my jacket to be down on my knees. I basically just pinned the piece that I just used. And when I did this, I did maybe about a half an inch around the whole thing. Like I drew around it and made sure that half an inch for obviously seam allowance. And then I just kind of like picked it up, placed it again, and cut the same pieces out. So now I have four. Obviously, same for the back part. Pretty simple. Just laying it out and tracing it. Let me point out, you see how I um, didn't cut inward into the shape of the, the front pieces? I'll come back to that later. I just kind of cut across and mashed it up with a ruler and kind of curved in just a little bit. So keep that in mind for future reference. I did not cut in. God, I messed up a whole thing of pins. Now I have a box of just sticky pins and I kept using them when I like would redo what was I doing when I was doing the white pieces I just reused kind of like the same pins what was weirder is I bought a new set of pins for this <laughs> for some reason I decided to flip over the back piece instead of just placing it it was because that side was already flat and I wanted to kind of conserve fabric my cat next to me so much so much moral support I love him and now the white pieces. So the whole time um, I got some really nice stretchy fabric for this. So all the fabric is stretchy. And uh, that made it easier for the fit, I guess. And it ended up being like super comfortable. It was so nice. But another reason why I had it form fitting is so I got stretchy fabric. So everything was like boom, form. <laughs> so I'm just doing the same thing pinning this white part down and drawing out about a half an inch around. If I had known what was gonna happen in the future, the issues I was gonna have, I would have given it maybe just a little bit more than a half an inch around for the white part. My gosh, this is me trying to figure out where I wanna place it, cause conserving fabric, <laughs> you know. I keep going silent because there's so much to look at like I need to speed this up a lot more there's I'm just staring so I pinned the two front pieces together and the two back pieces together and I was kind of testing it out to make sure that it fit the mannequin 
Because, you know, when you think you did something right and then you, like, test it out and you're like, uh, uh, excuse me, that's not right. So I decided to, um, yeah, pin it to the mannequin, test it out. This is just double check. Check again. Check again. Just keep checking. Because then in the end, something, something's going to be totally messed up and you're going to be shook. Here I am, uh, testing the seams. I wanted to see which seams I like the best for this fabric because I'm stretching it and I'm wearing my hat and looking at the camera. Oh God, stop whatever you're doing. Right now I am sewing the back pieces. I believe at, what is that? Is that a three? I think that's a three. I'm doing it at a half an inch and just sewing the two back pieces together. Yes, look at that. Look at me point. I did the back pieces. Wow, super impressive. Look at that pointing action. Oh my gosh, and look, I even pinned the sides to get ready to sew them. <laughs> wow. I'm probably explaining it and I'm just talking over myself. <laughs> what am I doing? All right, I'm sewing I'm showing you that now I am sewing the white lines at uh, a half an inch. The whole time I'm using this kind of like tealish string that matches the blue whole time. I don't think I used white string until it showed up on the outside. So half an inch sewing that. I'm going pretty slow because um, it's stretchy fabric and I want the seams to stretch also. So I have to hold the back and kind of hold the front and slowly stretch it as I sew it. Don't just, if you have stretchy fabric and you don't want it to stretch, sew it just fine. But if you want it to stretch, you're going to have to stretch it as you sew it. I just want to make that very clear <laughs> for anyone who's like, oh, why is my fabric stretch? <laughs> Yay. Okay. So I did two of them. I think I only, did I only film myself doing it? I think I only filmed myself doing it once because I'm like, people don't need to see me doing it four times. That's a little excessive, right? Just, I did it once and I did the same thing each time. <laughs> now, oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Big big mistake i'm gonna say right now if you're watching this trying to figure out you know how to make your patterns how to do it right my biggest thing of advice do not cut that edge out as you can see on his costume he has oh my god that green square you don't need to cut it out this is a big mistake on my part because after this just so many issues surface because I cut it out and I cut out way too much. So that was a big problem. So if I can save somebody else from this, don't cut it out. Just do not cut that piece out. You can just cut a hole into the white thing and then place it on top of it. You don't have to cut out that piece. It was such an issue. Oh my God. See, now I'm pinning it together. And this was ooh, a problem. During this, I was talking about how like I hate when people are doing fabric tutorials and they film themselves pinning stuff and I realized pinning stuff is like a big part of what I'm doing now I need to show everybody how much time it takes me just to pin things like why do you need to show yourself pinning everything it's not even that important but I'm like oh maybe people want to know how you're gonna be pinning stuff oh my gosh I'm loving my cat my cat came up and it was so sweet so I went in my closet and I found a shirt that I liked the arms of and I just needed them for the basic arm hole part. So I pinned the shirt onto the fabric <laughs> like a weirdo in like the weirdest way. Oh my gosh, but I didn't do it in the right way. This is so weird. My, gosh, my cat walking back and forth. He was so sweet and I had to just like stop and love him for a little bit. What am I doing? Stop laying on the floor. All right, so... I went the distance that I wanted. I mean, pick your arm length, whatever. I didn't want it to go. I made it go to like my elbow cause the elbow pads were gonna go over it. So I made it just as long as my elbow. I put the seam, not the seam, not the seam, the fold part of the shirt right on the edge and just kind of like, again, went a little more outward and then like awkwardly flipped it over and drew a line around it and then Cut it out and redid it because because the fabric was already folded over that was one sleeve so i had to do this four times for both the outside and the inside look at this again i'm pinning things nobody wants to see you pinning stuff again with people like oh my gosh i've watched a bunch of random 
videos of people just pinning things. It makes me angry. Like, of course, I want you to see I'm pinning things so you can know how much time it took me to pin things. But again, nobody wants to see you pinning stuff. Now, when I was doing the white part, obviously, the inch back and the inch and a half forward and then half an inch on each side came out to three inches. So all I had to do was measure three inches out and then the length of each of the sleeves. And even though I did it on the fold line of the fabric, I kind of cut into the sleeves. That way there was like a little slit on that top side too for when I sew on the sleeve lines. That way they match, you know, there. So I'm also cutting into the lines of this because even though I did two, they were folded over. So it ended up being four. Okay. We've gotten to a video of me explaining what I'm doing in the video that I didn't fast forward through. So let's just, mm -hmm. Okay, so I have my arm pieces and obviously I cannot grab. There's two layers to each one and each one is like, there we go. Oh my God, sewn a little bit differently because this side has a thicker seam allowance from this side so I had to pin them all weird either way there are two holes in this one and now I just need to add two holes into that one look at you so yeah I didn't record myself filming the front part it was a little weird because um I did a half of an inch sewing the white to the back part and then I did right on the edge of the presser foot doing the front part and I only did that to the shoulder all the way down right till I got to that weird square thing and then at the edge of the square thing down on the side of the hip so the three points the three lines of the square aren't sewn onto the um, blue thing yet and right here you can see me um, I set the fabric down and I kind of mapped out how big the hole was on the shirt and cut holes into it because I forgot to cut holes in it because I am an idiot. So right now I am pinning the whole outside lining to the inside lining. That way it all matches up and I can basically recut the holes out of it. So then I am pinning the edges to it just because I want the holes to match. I did it in a weird way. I'd... Uh, now I am cutting out the holes to the inner lining, front lining, whatever side that is. That way the holes match, yay. To make sure that they um, matched up, I had to sew one side as a half an inch and then sew the other side right next to the presser foot, as you can see. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna save the rest of my weird stuff for the next video but yeah if you want to see more pictures of everything just look on my instagram i have a bunch of weird progress pictures on there of when i was making this also if you have any questions about anything weird or if something wasn't clarified just ask me i know everything <laughs>